Thank you both for joining us. Thank you for having us. <laughs> so uh, before we get into the, the process of um, uh, how the film was made, I just have a couple of questions about the school itself. Um, for instance, how, how many years have you been running the school? And have you had a chance to really witness a difference in the success of your alumni? Yes, by all means. So. <laughs> um, um, the school was founded hold on, um, 19 years ago. And I started, well, my wife and I began the process of providing uh, special education, special education and social training to kids uh, at a time when we knew nothing about the process. So it was a hit and miss. The only thing that we knew that we had in our corner was we cared. And we wanted to provide the best of whatever there was to be provided for these troubled kids who were sent to us. So I requested my first contract with, with uh, Los Angeles Unified School District. And I specifically requested the hard to place kids. I wanted the kids who were uncontrollable. And this, that's what uh, was sent to us in the beginning. And uh, because we were able to uh, gain a great deal of success through dealing with the roughest that the school district had to deal with, we kind of got a little reputation, not all of which was uh, warranted, but um, very successful. And we've been doing it for 19 years. And I said, uh, 10 years ago, I wasn't going to do it anymore. And probably uh, 10 years from now, I'll be saying, I'm probably not going to do it anymore. <laughs> But um, as the description of the Bible points out, to whom much is given, much is required. And when you are from something, you, when you are from nothing by the standards of something uh, which I readily identify with, you don't forget. It makes you awfully humble. And so I'll keep doing it because it's the hardest work in the world, but I don't know of anything better to be done. Than what we do. Well, I'm not particularly well educated in the um, the structuring of the school districts and how various schools operate within uh, certain zones. Can you explain a little bit about how an academy works uh, within? You know, if you have a contract with the LA Unified School District, how does that work in relationship to the larger public schools? Um, when you say that you are working with the sort of more difficult to handle students, um, how much of the selection process is from you know, the academy versus from the LAUSD, uh, and how much of it comes from the students themselves uh, deciding to enroll there? Well, these kids are taken out of public school, mainstream education, because they're not able to uh, to meet the criteria or, or the requirements or mandates of the public school. Uh, they become unmanageable. Uh, and they become unmanageable, be, unmanageable primarily because these kids suffer from conduct disorders. Uh, they are labeled as um, uh, emotionally disabled, um, have serious learning disabilities, other handicap issues, uh, but because I'm not a psychologist, and a couple of our psychologists are here, uh, I submit to you that 99910% of it is um, directly related to conduct disorders. In other words, these kids have been allowed to do uh, what they, they've been allowed to run their own program. And because I was not trained as a special ed provider, the only thing I had to go on was common sense. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, there's certain things I just would not tolerate. And once the students realize that you've got their back, they don't have to protect themselves, they don't have to bring a gun or knife to school because they're uh, in fear of someone attacking them with a gun or knife, then they can relax. Uh, and shortly thereafter, they begin to realize also that they don't want a part of that hard, violent life. So, bottom line, with special ed, non-public school sector, there can be a maximum of 
12 students in a classroom, there must be a teacher and teacher's aide, uh, which will get a six to one ratio. That in turn allows us to give a lot of personalized attention. Uh, a lot of the kids with uh, so-called learning disabilities, and some do legitimately have learning disabilities, but for the most part, uh, they've been a little slothful and they've refused to apply themselves. They can't read because they've never attempted. In most cases, once our students, even though they may be 14, 15 years old, begin to realize that they can learn to read, you uh, see that bad behavior dissipate very quickly. I'm curious to know also from your point of view, how did you how did you sort of pitch this idea to your staff and to the students? Because, I mean... Oh, oh I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be no. some consent, right? No, I said, um, I need a tool which will provide me the opportunity to introduce suburban America into the urban American experience without their having to drive into the inner city. Everybody drives around the inner city. Nobody goes in unnecessarily. Let's see, either work there or live there. And so this film was able to do that. Um, what was and what continues to be very important to me is any child in America living under the circumstances that most of these kids live under in the inner city would be doing the same thing, killing, robbing, stealing. Um, and in South L.A., it has one single problem, which is it is not motivated. We must find a way. Washington can't do it. Sacramento can't do it. LA County can't do it. Neither can City Hall. It has to start with me, and it has begun. And now I'm excited about it, so I'd like to preach if I may. <laughs> uh, and this is the beginning of what we will continue to do um, over the next next 25 years, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, check my schedule. I'm just 66, <laughs> so I'm going to go 25. Um, I got excited about it because I can see the social value now, and I begin to understand it even better. But it starts with me and my neighbor. Um, for example, um, one of the kids being featured in the film, uh, Roderick, is now facing a 45 to life. Uh, it was booked on July 13th for murder. Another young man who was dancing in the, during the prom has just been sentenced to 70 years uh, uh, for murder. Um, one young lady whose uh, uh, photo is on the uh, um, on, on the um, the placard. Uh, there's a green light on, out on her. She's been shot once. And the young man who was kneeling at the grave of his brother has gone out and gotten large tattoos of his hood around his neck, which means it's just a matter of time before he'll be dead. I'm a realist. Uh, and I'm not trying to soft shoe anything. Uh, you'll notice in the in the film, I never said once, um, you should not gangbang. My attitude is, and I'm just keeping it real, if you want to gangbang, do what you want to do. But it's not acceptable in my house. You will not do it here. But I try to find a little subtle ways to make the young people understand on a daily basis that when you sign up for gangbanging, you sign up uh, with the understanding that you're going to die young or spend life in prison. On the flip side of the coin, and what I try to hedge against, is I also understand one of the greatest issues which um, tends to encourage these kids to go out and, and commit some of the crimes they do. I would venture to say that 60% of the kids in my school um, go to bed hungry at night. This stuff about one sixth of America going to be in hunger. Don't believe it. There's a lot of hunger in the inner city, and so, um, and the reason we're going to stop touring next month and showing this film is the one message is 
if you can just reach out and touch just one little soul, maybe you'll quickly discover that you'll soon begin to make a difference in their life. And that kid will touch ten other lives. And that next one will ten, touch ten, ten other lives. So along with, um, or included with all of the, uh, the things we intend to do in the coming year, we want to do a docu-series that will be coattailed on this. Hopefully we'll start shooting that in August, and it's going to be big. Mm -hmm. And then hopefully in uh, July we'll begin our adult cartoon series that's based on the documentary. And that's going to be big. And by now my <laughs> wife would be saying, honey, every dime we spent has come out of our personal teal. Where do you plan to get this money? Well, I'm going to pray, but I also remember that there's an old Southern saying, prayer is fine in prayer meeting. It ain't worth a damn in bad meeting. In bad meeting, you better get yourself a stick. So I'm going to have to find a stick, honey, but we'll find the money. Um, <laughs> All right, we'll have one last question before we open it to the audience. Sure. Um, and it's, I guess it's about the response from the students um, when you had the film completed, because uh, because of the fact that you produced the film, I'm, I'm assuming that this is your, this is what you, how you envision the school functioning. It's an accurate representation of life at the school. Do the students, have they seen it, and what did they think about this representation of their experience at the school? They, they are very pleased, and they are elated uh, because of their opportunity to finally express themselves. Heretofore, everything that has dealt with their involvement has always been a narrative from someone else who's given his or her opinion about what the kids want, what they're doing, and all of this. But nobody, I won't say nobody, too often, people do not uh, go to the, the student and say, I just want to hear from you, what are you thinking? How do you feel about life in general, whatever? Um, is it, you'll find it interesting, I'm sure, that uh, even in, in, the, in the field of psychology, um, uh, those areas that deal specifically with behavioral, um, inappropriate youth behavior, you know, uh, they write books on uh, what we must do to uh, enhance the child or encourage that child to take on a better kind of behavior. But have you ever known a kid to write a book about his behavior and why he's behaved the way he's behaved? So everybody is projecting, excuse me, not as too finite, not everybody is projecting. Too often people are projecting. And um, and so the one of the one of the things that has been very exciting to me. Is, and I made this statement clear to Corey uh, when we began. This was not a film I wanted to do about Andrew Manley, and not so much New West Tech Academy. Uh, I wanted to give these kids a platform from which they could express it. Thank you very much.